The biggest lies we tell ourselves, and today is no different. Today, our lie is, I don't need anyone. So we're going to get into that today. We're going to start with Ecclesiastes chapter number 4, verses number 9 and verse number 10. Read it with me. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. I don't need anyone. The scripture goes back and says, two are better than one. For if they fall, and I think we should delete that saying when. <laughs> and when, because we all fall sometime. When we fall. But the scripture shares in Proverbs 24 and 16 that a just man or a righteous man falls how many times? Seven times, but he rises up again. So even though we fall, there's going to be someone that's there, God places to help us in our time of struggle, in our time of need. And the scripture goes on to say that if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who falls when he, who's alone when he falls. So that means you've got to be around people that are strong enough to lift you up. If you're spiritually weak, you need to be around people that are stronger than you. If everybody is struggling, you don't need to be around people that are struggling just as much as you. That's why I'm, I'm not a real big proponent of support groups when everybody is struggling. If I'm broke, I don't want to be around other broke people. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me. You have two hands, one to help yourself, and the other for what? The other is to help others. Romans 15 and 1 says, those of us who are strong ought to bear with the infirmities of those who are weak. See, where you are strong, others may be weak. But where you are weak, someone else is strong. And you use and depend on and, and you rely on one another. Because at some point, you will need one another. First point I want to share with you today is, I can do bad all by myself. What they're saying is, I've been burned. I've been hurt. I've been rejected. And when we do that, what we tend to do is we put up walls. And these walls become protection. They also become barriers. Because walls not only keep bad folks out, it keeps good people that's trying to come in out of your life also. Number two, I'm a loner. That's what we say. When you don't need, I don't need anyone, I'm a loner. And I, I, I have the word loner in there because I want to see that there's a difference. Because a loner is someone who gives with the idea that you're going to give back to me. Not only will you give back to me, but I expect interest on what I'm giving you. And they look for people who have the need, and they're there to fulfill that need and obligate a person to give back. That's a loner. I give love because I'm expecting not just love, I'm expecting more in return. So I'm a loner. And when you tend to get around people like that who are never sincere, nobody wants to be around that for long. Someone who's always in a lending mode, they're never giving, they're always there because I want and expect something back from you. My friendship with you is conditional. My love for you is conditional. And everything a person does, when you know there's a condition about it, you just don't want to be around that anymore. And you can find yourself alone when you are a loner. You looking at the bears? Keep comforting one another. Isn't that a good word? Sometimes a person who's alone, and I found this to be true, when a person who's alone is because they don't play fair, or they play by their own rules. You may be one of those people. You may not play fair. I was a friend of mine named JP. I remember, this is JP, Will, I'm 100 years old now, and I remember back when I was 12. JP, JP was one of those guys, we'd get out there, we'd be playing, right? Cops and robbers. And I would shoot him point blank. <laughs> I would. I shoot him, bam! And he wouldn't fall. I said, JP, I shot you, man. He said, no, you didn't shoot me. What you see is this is a mirror of a reflection of me, and I'm really behind you. <laughs> JP, man, I shot you. Yeah, and I didn't want to play with JP. But JP played by his own rules. You know, he didn't know how to play fair. When you don't know how to play fair, you'll end up playing alone. And sometimes we isolate ourselves because you don't know how to be a team player. 
And lastly, people say, I don't need God. We argue about that. I don't need God. They don't come to church. They don't read the scripture. They don't pray. They don't, I, don't need, I don't need all of that. Even when we come to church, if we come to church to receive, we'll never get enough. If you come to church to receive, you'll never get enough. But if you come to give, you'll get more than enough. If you truly come with the attitude that you come because you're a giver, God will pour down. Because when you come to give, that means you're giving your praise. And when praise goes up, the blessings come down. And when you start giving to someone, he says that the more you give, the more blessed you are is when you give, not when you receive. So it's when we learn that the giving is the key, not the receiving, it's the giving. When we learn how to be really true and perfect givers, then God starts sowing back to us. Isaiah 41 and verse 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Fear not. We have to understand that when we feel alone, God is taking us through some things. Put your hand in his hand. He extends his hand out to you at that time. And all we have to do is just hold his hand. Just take his hand. I remember when my mother was dying and I had faced that fact that she was not going to be here much longer. I visited her for the last time and I remember leaving in the morning and I, my brother called me a couple weeks later. He said, Mom, went home to be with the Lord. And for a moment, just for a moment, it was about me. And I began to weep and, and then it put out my hand. And God was able to lift me up and he says, I've got her. The peace is knowing that no matter what, God is still in control. When you're isolated because you want control, you don't want to give control to God. If you put your hand in his hand, he says, I got you. I got you. And that gives you that peace that passes all understanding. That allows you to get up and face tomorrow with a new day. Because God's got you. We're all going to go through those hardships, hard times. You're going to get beaten down. You're going to have questions without answers. And the one thing you got to know is that God's got you. There's a peace of just knowing that God's in control of it all. The old days, they said, you may not understand it now, but you'll understand it better by and by. Be the light. Father, thank you.